Hey budget gardeners, Vita Loca here. As you know, I'm on a mission to tackle one flower bed at a time within my own garden. Join me today as we tackle a flower bed. So let's go. So this is just the before shot. Now keep in mind, the before shot looks really nice because Mr. Budget Gardener did come in here and he did quite a bit of work. I'm gonna show you what he did. He came in right here and he edged this flower bed just to make it look a little bit tidier. He cut back all of the Stella Doro daylilies and this bed is packed with those kinds of daylilies and they really just needed to be tidied up and cleaned up to get them prepared for the next step that I'll be doing. And then he just came in and did an overall weeding job to tidy up the bed and get it prepared for phase two, which is where I take over. What I like to do is think a little bit, but not too much about the project at hand and chunk it out. So the first thing I did was come in and I removed all of the Stella Doro daylilies from the front of the bed. So I dug up all six of the Stella Doro de Lilies that were towards the front of the bed. In case you're wondering why I'm digging all of these up, I have this type of daylily all over my yard. I'm still going to keep a few of the daylilies in this bed. I just don't need that many. I noticed that there's not much color happening in that flower bed. It, when these all bloomed, they looked beautiful, but now there's nothing really blooming in that bed. That's why I'm getting rid of a lot of them from this flower bed. And we're gonna be replacing other beautiful plants in that flower bed. I will keep a few of the Stella Doros in there. So next I'm gonna dig up a few more towards the back of the bed. It took me maybe 10 to 15 minutes to dig all of these up. Keep in mind, they are only two to three year old plants. So the clumps were not huge, but it was pretty easy digging. Now we're gonna tackle the Stella Doros towards the back of the flower bed. Well, we dug six originally and then five more of the Stella Doro. It's a lot of plants there. So now the next thing I wanna do is take a look at the center row there. I'm not gonna keep all the Stella Doros. However, I will keep a few just because I do like that they bloom early in the summer. So we have one, two, three, four, and five Stella Doro daylilies. I don't want all five. So what I'm gonna do is dig out two, if not three of those. So let's get this job finished in terms of Stella Doro daylilies. I wasn't gonna talk a lot in this video, but you know me, I love to talk. The next thing I wanna do is come in and just cut back my iris because they're looking a little messy, a little floppy. And as long as I leave some of the foliage on here, it will continue to feed the iris rhizome during the season. Does it ever happen that you are gifted or you bought a certain perennial in your yard and over time it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and you've divided it and moved it around all over your yard. Well, that's pretty much what I've done with the Stella Doro daylily. And I do love daylilies. I know some people have a love-hate relationship with them. I love them. I think they're really pretty. I like having them in my yard, but I don't necessarily need one kind. I wanna have all different colors and different ones that bloom at different times of the year. And what I've seen over the last few years Namely, to be honest with you, because I've been making these videos for YouTube and by making the videos, I'm a little more conscious and noticing what's blooming when in my flower beds. And I noticed that when the Stella Doros bloom, they put on a fabulous show, which is great. But if all you have in a flower bed is Stella Doro daylilies, well, guess what? Even though it's a reblooming daylily, as soon as it's done blooming the first flush of blooms, it gives out a couple of blooms here and there. 
And at least for me, for my flower beds, and I think probably for a lot of you as well, I want to have some sort of interest in my flower beds at least three seasons of the year. Optimally four, but I feel like it's unrealistic, at least for me, to have four season interest in each and every single flower bed in my yard. But I do think it's possible to have some sort of interest, at least two, if not three seasons out of the year in each of my flower beds. And so what I'm trying to do this year is one flower bed at a time and really take after it and tackle it. And sometimes that involves emptying out a good amount of plants, but I'd rather do that so that I can really get a good feel of what's going on and what I'm doing within a particular flower bed. Normally with iris, you would want to cut them maybe in a pretty fan fashion, but that's usually if you're going to be transplanting your iris so that they don't flop over. For right now, I'm just cutting them back a little bit so they look a little tidier. It's the end of July and it's a great time, I feel, to not only be doing regular garden maintenance, but also to really look around at your yard and see what changes you want to make. And that's why I'm moving around a lot of plants this time of year. I know it's not optimal. Normally, you don't want to divide or dig up and move plants unless it's like spring or fall. However, I get busy in the spring with certain jobs. I get busy with certain jobs in the fall. And I know that one of the big jobs I'm trying to do is add drip irrigation one bed at a time. And this is the next bed to get drip irrigation. And when I do that with Mr. Budget Gardener, I like to do it in a way where we think a little bit about the plantings. And if we're gonna have three rows or four rows of plantings within a flower bed. I do believe in chunking out my projects. I believe it can be very overwhelming, at least for me, if I just look at a flower bed and try to figure out exactly what I wanna do with it from beginning till end. For example, this flower bed, I just knew, generally speaking, what needed to be done in terms of the initial cleanup and maintenance of it. But I really haven't thought about all the plants that are gonna end up going in here before we put in the drip irrigation. But I did think about the easy plants that I do need to remove. And when I do that, that gives me opportunity for planting. This year, I also looked carefully at the sun that was coming in this area and which trees were shading this area. So based on that, I know that we do need to limb up a couple of trees around this bed, flower bed. And also I know that, at least for right now, I don't wanna to have too many daylilies near this side of the flower bed because it doesn't get as much sun as the other side of the flower bed. Next up, we have what's called the Zagreb or Zagreb Coreopsis. So the plan with it is to dig up this whole entire patch. I'm gonna be dividing it down and then I'm gonna be putting pieces of this back in this flower bed, but it's not just gonna be one big clump. It's gonna be a number of clumps. I'm not sure how many yet. And whatever I don't end up keeping in this flower bed, I'm then gonna pot up and I'm gonna put it down in my backyard plant nursery so I can think a little bit more about where else I wanna put this in other parts of my yard. But I'm not gonna do all that in this video. I'm gonna be making a separate video on that process because some people like to just do a search on how to divide the Zagreb Coreopsis. So I'm gonna put a link to that video down below in the description. So if you are interested on the process for dividing this plant, be sure to check out that video. It's like I snapped my finger and the Coreopsis magically disappeared. I'm gonna show you what it looks like now that it's dug up. Here it is. And each little sprig, as I showed in the video on how to divide it, kind of looks like this with the roots down here at the bottom. But this is gonna take me a while to basically go through all this divide it, and I'm going to be potting up a lot of this. So between this and all the Stella Doro daylilies that are in this cart, this cart is full, which is such a great feeling. I wanted to step back a little bit and just show you what's going on in the bed. So it's been emptied out quite a bit, but I do have some structure, some bones that I want to keep in here. So right over there, that is a nice tree that I have, a birch tree. And on this side here, there is another tree. I have an arborvitae there, and eventually I'd like to dig up an arborvitae 
from my yard and place it right there, just so that this bed is symmetrical. Also because the arborvitae that I'd be digging it from is not doing that great. So I figure if I had one there and one there, that would be really nice, and that will be on a different date. Last year I did put in some hookra that I had divided elsewhere from my yard. I wanna leave that there at least for right now. I wanna leave this tree right here. This is a crab apple tree, and you can see it's basically in the center of this bed. So I like the placement of it. And based on the placement of the crab apple tree, I'm looking at the two Stelladoro daylilies. I would like them to be symmetrical in this bed. So what I'll end up doing is digging out at least one of those Stelladoro daylilies. I just need to figure out which one. And the other thing that I'm going to be digging out of this bed are some other daylilies that I have. Let me take you in closer and I'll show you. So right behind this Stelladoro daylily, there are some daylilies here. I don't know the variety, what kind they are, but I'm pretty sure they bloom after the Stelladoro daylilies. So those, I'm going to be digging them up. I'm going to be potting them up. They will end up coming back in this bed. As we move this way, there's one over there. There's one over there. I'm going to dig those guys up. And then there are a bunch over in here. I'm going to dig those up as well. Earlier this year, we planted some GM in here. I'm going to be leaving the GM here. I feel like they're fine where they are. And next year, you know, once we take a look at this bed, if we need to move them, we can move them then. But I did space them out enough equally in this bed that I'm happy with their placement. These plants here that look a little sad, we planted them there at the same time that we planted the GM. They're called Centauri. And I'm going to keep them in here because, again, I had put some thought into it at the time and I like the placement of it. I think they look sad because this bed is just really dry. So the drip irrigation is definitely gonna help out. I have one sedum here and one sedum over there. I'm almost sure they're the Autumn Joy sedum. I don't love that I place them towards the back of the bed. As you know, sedum likes a lot of sun. So I'm gonna be digging those up, dividing them, and I'm gonna be moving those towards the front of the bed. So I'll make a separate video on how to divide uh, the sedum and if you're interested in that video in the future, I'll be sure to link that down in the description area as well. I'm going to do those tasks that I set my mind to, and then we'll revisit this flower bed and see what we have to work with. It's the next day, and this project is officially complete, at least for right now. I'll take you in for a closer look in a minute, but I wanted to mention a few things that I do plan to do before the end of the year. Down in that corner over there, I will be moving a boxwood from my bay window garden and I'll be putting that over there just so that I have them on both sides of this bed. I think that will look really pretty. And then right above me over here, there are one if not two limbs that are hanging over and they're providing some shade on this side of the bed. I really want this bed to get more sun. So we will be cutting those limbs off at a later date. And if I have time, I do have annuals that still have not made it into the ground. I can always pop some in towards the front of this bed for some additional color. And you'll see that in a future garden tour if I end up doing that. Mr. Budget Gardener added three lines of drip irrigation, one towards the front of the hookra, one towards the center of the bed, and then a third line in front of the iris over there. Towards the front of the flower bed, there were already the hookra or coral bells. And all I did was I dug them all out, I divided them, and I made a little bit of a pattern just so that there are some darker colors as well as some lighter colors in this bed. And I really am pleased with how this looks. Now keep in mind, since I divided all of these, these will really fill in nicely by next year. But it looks so much better than it did before because before there were gaps in between and there just wasn't um, the light and dark colors that were alternating. And I really think that when you do that with your hookra or coral bells, it just makes it look a little more interesting. I had sedum that was towards the back of the bed that got divided and moved towards the front of the bed. So there are three small plants over here. The flower bed had some mixed color of daylilies that bloom after the Stelladoro daylilies. I dug all those up, I divided them, and I put them in this little pocket over here. This is a sedum that I bought last year, overwintered in a pot, and this year I finally have found a home for it. And I went ahead and divided that sedum, so now I have one piece on this side of the bed. I kept one Stelladoro daylily here in the bed, 
and then right next to it is a Stokes Aster that I recently bought and I also made a video showing you my process for deadheading the Stokes Aster. I just love that color in this bed. And you can see that I pretty tightly packed the plants in. I did leave space around the, day, the daylily because I know that even though I cut the daylily back right now, normally that daylily would be fanning out and taking up a good amount of space in that area. And then past the daylily that you see over here, basically the pattern I just talked about repeats itself again on to the end of the bed here. As we make our way this way, you'll see that there's GM there. There was GM in this bed, I divided it, and I basically turned it into a drift. And that's something new to me. I don't really make a lot of drifts in my flower beds, so I'm experimenting with that. And then towards the back of the bed, I basically took the iris that were in this bed and I divided the iris, but I also just made them into small little clumps or groupings. So they looked a little more uniform towards the back of the bed. Behind the Stokes Aster, do you see that red plant? That's called the cardinal flower. And I have a story about that. My mother-in-law wanted me to collect the seeds from her yard a number of years ago when she was still with us. And I collected the seeds because she really wanted me to grow the flower for her. Well, I never had a chance to give her the flower. I winter sowed these seeds that she gave me. And here are the plants. And I'm really happy to have them in my yard now. And I'll think of her every time I see the cardinal flower blooming and as we go this way in the flower bed there's the same pattern of the gm near the gm on both sides of the bed over here is a centauri or centauria and they're very small but i was able to divide them and so basically i added patches of both of those on either side of this flower bed a final thing that I want to mention is that in this flower bed, there are daffodils that were planted last year or the year before last. And they're going to just pop up where they're going to pop up. I don't know where I planted them in this bed. Believe it or not, I didn't even run into one daffodil in here, but I know that they're in here. So next spring, we'll be on the lookout for where those daffodils pop up. And if they pop up in between some of these plants that I have here, I may have to just move them around, just shift them a little bit but that's okay. As some of you know, my goal for this year is tackling one flower bed at a time. So this flower bed is done and on to the next flower bed. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comment, feel free to put them down in the comment section below. And until the next video, make it a great day with gardening.